invented. Now, let's move on to the main event. You guys ready for this? So we're, we're about ready to take a look at the user interface of Project Chaos. So a few little heads up on this. Uh, the version I'm using for this is the... Uh, it's the it's the beta before the release version. So it'll look like there's no presets in it yet. But don't worry, there are presets. We, we're saving them externally so that me and Aaron don't accidentally write over each, each other's um, presets because we're working on the same folder. So this is just the version I'm showing you guys so that I you know don't fuck anything up. So here we go, let's move over to the thing. So first up, let's take a look at the Project Chaos UI. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so here we go. So this is, this is what Project Chaos looks like. And the best way to think of this is like four Project Alphas or four Project Bravos stacked on top of each other. Now, the way this works, okay, you have four layers, which you can click by selecting the name. You just click. I'm like, I want to use layer three. And what it'll do is uh, it'll update this middle section. So this top bit is your layer selection, right? The best way to think of this is in like a, you start at the top and you work your way to the bottom. So up at the top here, we have our layer selection and you, know, you have four layers and each layer you can load one of our factory banks. Okay, so we've got some breaks, some loops, some chaos drums, some distorted sound downers, drones and textures, drum hits, fragment drones and repeaters. So fragments are a new concept we're playing with. It's where we take a very small section of sound, like a moment in time, a fragment of time, and we kind of uh, repeat it or we kind of uh, mess with that fragment. Uh, then we go down to uh, Haze, which is sort of like drones, but they're more uh, phrase-based. You'll see how that's useful in a minute. Uh, we've got Impacts. Then we have a new, uh, a new folder category called Kick Force, which is where we have these really gritty... Uh, loops that are made from uh, basically kick drums and really aggressive low end. We have some uh, natural recorded percussion loops. We have your standard rhythm, low, mid, high. And then we also have taps and extras. So extras is where we ran out of space in the other rhythms. So like some, we, you've got some more loops, you know, that are low, mid, high. But we also have these things where we're just hitting uh, very clicky, tappy things. We have some risers, sub booms, synths, which are synth waveforms. You'll see how that comes in handy. And then we have whooshes and we have whoosh and impact. So whoosh and impact is basically our new whoosh bang designer. And you'll see how that works in a bit. So this top bit is our layer selection. This middle bit here is our group section. So as you can see, this is layer one currently. And if I click, you know, if I click layer two, this is now representing layer two. And, you know, the same for like if I load in a type of sound. By the way, this loads purged. So uh, when you change categories, it'll load in that bank. That way, you know, you're using the minimal CPU. Um, or the, the minimum RAM usage, you know, so you're not, everything's not loaded in all the time for no reason if you're not using it. Anyway, so, and this bottom bit here is the master select. So let's take a look at how this works. So on our main window, those of you who have Alpha and Bravo will be familiar with our TV screen approach. So basically all the, all the functions and all the uh, editing features are housed within the little window, the same as we did on the other ones, right? So we have our edit window. This is where you select the sound you want. So if I just play a little bit of one of these hazes, So this is essentially like a uh, you know a phrase based drone. Uh, what, so what you do is each in each of these layers you can have one sound loaded, right? Or you know you can whack it in menu mode. But we'll get to that. Okay. Oh, oh wait, where's my where's my little video? Where's my little video? Do I ever? Where's my? I just realized that my video isn't loaded. Wait one second. One second. Oh god, I should be. I should be on. There I am. Hello. <laughs> I just realized I wasn't there. Okay, so this edit window. So you see we've got this sound currently loaded and that's mapped, you know, that's mapped across the keyboard. So what you can do is you can scroll through sounds like this, you know. You know, so you can scroll through 
manually like that. And you'll again, you'll see, this will all make sense. That the the more I talk, the more you'll just be like, oh, okay, I get it. So you scroll through like this, but we also have this option uh, here. So if you look at the bottom of each layer, in the bottom left corner, there's a thing that says menu. If you put it into menu mode, what that does is essentially spread all of the samples in that bank. So in this case, the haze folder is now spread across the keyboard. So if I push that middle key, we now have all the drones laid across the keyboard. So you can find the sound that you want to play in layer one by whacking it in, you know, in uh, menu mode and go. Okay, so let's say I want that sound. And then when I click off of menu mode, now that sound is stretched across the keyboard. So it's a very easy way to go through sounds. And if you want to, you can just leave this on because uh, we've also given the menu mode the option to change the pitch with a key switch. So you can play them all at the same time. and then change the note. So you can do things like that. Uh, so let's move on to the step sequencer. So this is where the, this is where the name Project Chaos comes from. So this is our, our updated step sequencer. Uh, for those of you who have Alpha and Bravo, you will know pretty much how this works. Uh, this bit, at least, how this works. So we have our standard step sequencer, and underneath we have uh, ostinato. So what I'll do right now is I'm just going to put it on synths, uh, so it's easier. So it's easier to show. For those of you who are wondering what synths is, basically we sampled some waveforms. They're not just raw waveforms. So we used some analog synths, uh, created like these uh, sustains, and then we import them as. <laughs> So let's just use like a pulse width sound for now. Let's use the low one. So you see. So our, uh, I'm just going to mess this. Up. So the ostinato thing we have here, this is basically, uh, if, if you ha don't have Alpha Brava and you're wondering how this works, basically this is an ostinato creator. So let's say we have a rhythm, like a little, you know, three plus three plus two. So we have eight steps. So we're just going to say we want eight steps playing sixteenths. And if we change this number, three, two, one, and then three, two, one, two. When I hold a key, uh, when I hold like a, a triad, basically this is going to push the third key. So if we look at ostinato up and ostinato down, if we have ostinato up, let's say I'm playing a, I'm playing a, a D minor. So D, F, and A. If I play it in that order, D will be number one, F will be number two, and A will be number three. So this is going to go A, D, F, D. And, but if I play it, you know, in an inversion, A, D, F, then A will be number one, D will be number two. So it's it's a little bit more um, it's a little bit more usable than just a standard uh, arpeggio, which we also offer, by the way, if you just want to use an arpeggio. And if you do the ostinato down, that means that number one becomes the furthest right. So again, if I do a D minor from uh, in root position, so that's D F then A. A will be number one, F will be number two, and D will be number three. Sorry, it's a bit loud. I'll turn my voice up. Hang on. It, it happens. It happens that occasionally my voice is too quiet. I'm just going to turn you up a notch. Hopefully that's better, but yeah. So this is, uh, that's how that works. But those of you who have uh, Project Alpha or Bravo will already know that that is how that works. But then this is where the name chaos comes from. So each single step within this step sequencer has its own sub step sequencer. That's confusing. So let's just do it like this. Um, I'll turn this down. And I'm going to put all these back to one. So it's because like, it, you see, if, if I change these numbers and the ostinato is on, when you get to a number, say I'm only holding one key and it's looking for a number three, that will just be silent. But then if I bring in a second key, it will put it where number two is. So you can do it like that. 
So let's take a look. Let's say that we want, for example, this step here. We can we can come here and like we can give it you know, 32 steps, or we could just give it like four. So you get like a roll because one of the most restricting things about step sequences is they are set to just a grid, right? Uh, and you know, if you've got it in 16th, you're only going to get 16th. Like there's no way to put in like a 30 second note somewhere in the middle, but you can do that now. So you just come here and you like, you turn the volume of each of the sub steps up and then you, uh, choose where to start. So our start, this is basically the sample start. And one of the things we actually allow you to do with the sample start is we have a little zoom button here. So you can zoom in on the waveform and you can actually select where on the waveform you want each step to start, you know? This is more useful with the loops, but you know, just for the sake of argument, I'll show you that now. So now what we, this, this step here has four steps in it. <laughs> I mean, that's too many, <laughs> but hang on. It's too many at this tempo anyway, but let's. Uh, let's just knock the tempo down to 90. You know, should you want to do that? And of course you can tune each of those steps differently if you wanted to do some weird shit. And then we have this duration button. So basically this says for how long is this step gonna play? One, it will only play for one sixteenth. If I put it to two, it'll play for two sixteenths and then four. So it's playing four notes, but it's stretching it over four beats. You can do that, and that, that becomes really useful when you're doing it with like drones and stuff. But I'll show that again in a second. So like, let's say, for example, we just put this down to two. Uh, if you hold uh, command and click, by the way, it'll reset it to the default. Something to mention about the start, uh, sample start, is it is rhythmically uh, synced. So it will always be, say you're using a loop, it will always land on a rhythmic beat like so it's not just uh, a random sample start it will always be locked to a tempo okay so you see that's a very useful thing and if we put it on let's say we put it on a, a loop right so let's bring in an actual loop uh let's bring up something useful so you see this is just a loop if i turn this off this is what the loop sounds like okay and before, before we move on to that, let me just show you something. Uh, so if you've got a rhythmic sound, um, you, uh, yeah, all you have to do to get it in time, it will just play as is, you know, like as if you dragged it into contact, you know, it'll slow down. If you click the sync button, it's now synced to the tempo. And let's say you've got a rhythmic sound that isn't pitched, you know, like a drum that you don't want to pitch up as you go up, you just turn off tracking and then no matter what key you press, it you know it will play that sound. But we'll, we'll turn it on for now, just in case we want to do something weird. So let's. So now we put it back in the step sequencer. Okay, so you get that little rhythmic thing. But as you can probably hear, we're getting a bit of machine gun effect, right? And the reason that is is because the sample start for beats, you know, one, two, three. I think beat three has got some different change. You see, they're all just. Uh, they're all just on beat one. So what we can do is we can say, okay, we want beat two to be on, you know, actual beat two. Beat three's got that. And beat four, we want on this random little 16th. And beat five, we want here. So that way, this loop becomes infinite amounts of loops because it's rhythmically synced and you're choosing where your steps are based rhythmically. And that is another usable loop. So, you know, again, this is what it sounded like just by itself. You turn it on. And one, one cool thing we've got going here, I'm gonna keep saying one cool thing we've got. So if we come to the edit window, if you look down at the bottom here, we have velocity to the filter. So that is basically as ever hard you hit the key, it will open the filter by that amount. Right now it won't do anything because the filter's open. But if I turn this down, Right, so the filter is just on. If I put this up to like, I don't know, 60. So you see like this, uh, because the velocity here is is all the way up, that means that when this, when this step hits, uh, hits 100%, it's pushing up the uh, filter by that 60%. So it's coming up to like here. If I put this all the way to 100, 
when I put the when I put the step up to 100%, the filter opens 100%. So you can create really. Uh, this is how fake round robins are made, by the way. Is uh, you use volume and a filter. So the quieter it is, the more uh, muffled it is, because that's kind of what a sound does in real life. So we can put this down. Something worth mentioning is that uh, every single one of these, uh, you know, uh, parameters can be linked to, um, you know. Can, can be linked to automation. So you can mess with the decay. You can assign just the attack to a MIDI CC if you want. So you can do whatever you want. Like these, literally any dial that you can see can be attached uh, to automation should you want to. We'll just keep that up so you can see what it is. So we've got like a cool step here. So let's move, let's move that step down into our effects section. So this effects section, some of you will be familiar with. Uh, so we have our filter. This is a uh, main filter, so it's not the group filter that we have here. Something Again, something else worth mentioning is you can now choose any filter shape you want. We haven't decided it's just low pass anymore. You can choose any of the filters. Um, in fact, yeah, I forgot to show the ADSR. So we've got the AMP ADSR, which I'm sure most of you know what this is. So you can create some weird effects with just the AMP. And this is the filter one. So this is uh, controlled by the amount. So at, the, at 12 o'clock, it is uh, zero if we go up. Uh, but then if we go uh, the opposite direction, it's doing the reverse of the filter, uh, filter ADS up. So anyway, so we like this sound. Let's put some effects on it. So again, we have the filter, the grit, which is distortion. Uh, we have crush, which is bit crusher. We have punch now, which is attack. Uh, so this is the transient designer. And we also have a slam, which is like a mix of compression and effects, you know, to basically just make things more powerful. Um. Okay, so that's a cool sound. But we also have the uh, the delay. So the uh, for the important dials like delay and stuff, the rate information is is up here on the step sequencer. So we want 632s. That's like a, you know, that's a, a, almost like a triplet rhythm. So let's just pull the delay up. So you can hear that's pull the feedback up and a bit of bounce. So we've got that. So now if we play the rhythm, we, we're going to get delays on top of that. And of course, we've got the reverb. So you see, we've built like a usable sound. And of course, if you want to be weird, you know, you can bring up the steps and put it up to like 32 and just create some weird buzz. Oh, wait, I did it on the wrong step. <laughs> Let's do it on this one. Oh, God, no. <laughs> you see, so it's that... <laughs> And again, we put this on like synths. And this is one of the powerful things about this engine. So we've built like this little rhythmic, this cool little rhythmic thing, right? And let's say we're happy with it. Like we like the rhythm. I'm actually just going to put this back down to one step. So now we can just literally change the sound. So we can just... Because like we like that rhythm. We like how the start positions are. You know, we, maybe we want these like last two beats to be uh, panning, you know, so we can just pan that one a bit left and this one a bit right. Okay, so we like that. And we could just scroll through sounds. We can be like, no. You know, we could even come to something like the kick force. The cool thing is, okay, so this is this is um, this was a choice more than a more than a oh no we can't change it. Um, so let's say for example you import a loop and it's in sixteenths, right? So like this loop for example, when I play it, you can hear it's got right. You can hear that that's basically uh, it's got it's got a rhythm built into it. So if I put the step sequence, so right now it's in sixteenths. So you're, you're, there's not enough time 
within uh, a 16th beat here in order to, uh, you know, play the next 16th within the loop. But let's say, for example, I put the rate down to eighths. There's now going to be enough room for two 16ths. So if my loop that I'm using has 16ths built in it, you're going to hear that. So in that way, the step sequencer becomes like a re-trigger and it creates a completely new rhythm. Because it's got 16ths built into the loop. So if I put this on fourths, you see, so it's because it's got that built in, you're still getting that. Uh, you know, and again, I'll try that on something more rhythmic so you can hear what it's doing. So you see this, this rhythm has 16ths built in it. So if we're playing the step sequencer in fourths, it's going to play those 16ths, but re-trigger it. And again, we can up that to eights or 16ths. It depends really what you're going for. Okay, so let's, uh, we've done the effects. So now let's look at the, uh, the mod section. What I'm actually going to do first is I'm going to show you a cool little thing. So we have these uh, sounds called hazes which I showed you a little bit of a second ago, which are these. Right? These kind of droney things. So these work really well in the step sequencer too. But what you want to do is you want to throw them on fourths, right? But bring up the reverb. So now we've got like, you know, you can make rhythms out of drones. So let's jump over to the mod section. So this is a bit more improved from last time. So we have uh, two LFOs and two sequences. The sequences work more like a, what's the word? They work more like a custom LFO than actual step sequences. So this is basically for building custom shaped uh, LFOs, just so that you're aware. But anyway, so let's say we want the LFO and we want the... Uh, let's go back over to the... Uh, actually, no, let's pull this down. All right, so we've brought the filter down a bit. <clears throat> and let's say we want, I don't know, some 16th note. Again, the information's up here. We want some 16th note thing on the cutoff. We just... But at the same time, we can also add a, uh, let's say we want a two bar sine wave on the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. And again, this doesn't have to be with uh, loops, you know, you can do it with repeaters. even do it with risers if you wanted. You see, so you're creating like a cool rhythm. And the cool thing with that, you see, because it's got these kind of offbeat uh, options. So someone asks in the chat, is there a random option? No, but let me show you what you can do. So let me just quickly bring out the, the low thing again. So let's say, now we're layering up loops, by the way. So now we have two layers on. So when I push a key. So layer one is doing that. It's using a riser as a rhythm, which is cool. And we've just got like a, a low rhythm kind of going by itself. So let's say, uh, you know, you wanted to change up a loop, but at the same time, you didn't really, you know, you didn't really want to put too much effort into it. Again, because this step sequencer is um, rhythmically based, I can just play the note and then just move my mouse around. You see, so, so if you're feeling lazy, you know, you can you can just hold hold the mouse button down and just randomly move around the start thing. Yeah. 
if, if you're feeling so inclined, you know? And again, let's pull. And we can make it like a rhythm and then we can actually put some velocity fill. And what we can do now is we can, uh, we've got an LFO doing, you know, I don't know, let's put, let's put a high rhythm that's just playing a high rhythm. If you, if you hear that, it means the sync isn't on it. So now we can, um, not that one, there we go. Uh, we can apply the sine wave that we have here to the pan. Uh, I don't want to do it to layer two, I want to do it to layer three. And so like you see how you can use loops with sounds on top of other loops doing that. And again, if I wanted, if I felt so inclined, I can change uh, how that loop sounds, you know, by just putting the, uh, the step sequencer on and then just holding the mouse button and moving up and down the start, the sample start. And because I, when you're using the step sequencer, because you can, um, yeah, when you're using the step sequencer, because it's in 16th now, when you use the filter uh, ADSR, you can actually make clicky, filterish sounds because it's re-triggering. So we have the mutant solo buttons up here, by the way, so. So let's say we wanted it clicky like that. So that's all cool. That's all cool. Um, so let's uh, jump over to the mix page. Let's say, for example, the uh, I'm sure most of you know what EQ and compression is. So the way it works is we have layer one going across left to right, layer two, layer three, and then layer four. So this is the frequency. Uh, this section on the left, rather, is... Uh, is, is the EQ section. And on the right here, this is your compressor controls. So let's say that this low rhythm in the middle here had too much bass in. You just, I actually kind of like it with more bass. And then we want to compress it a little bit. You know, we'll just bring the ratio up, pull the attack maybe up here. So let's say that like I'm getting bored, you know, I can just change this to something random. Uh, and this is, this is what I was talking about. So I don't know if you guys remember me tweeted out is that like I was supposed to be working on the library and I spent just shitload of time playing with it. <laughs> So you see, I have a completely new loop, uh, just like just straight up like that, which is which is fun, right? That's a cool way of doing it. So something else we added, um, because I'm I'm with you guys. We can all agree that the built-in effects in Contact are kind of shite, right? We could all agree on that. So we've given you the option to route each of these uh, layers out independently, right? So as you can see, I've set up out one, out two, out three, out four in my Contact. Auxiliary. It will. This will differ on DAW, so I'm, I'm not going to go into how to set that up on your specific DAW, but for the purpose of demonstration, I'll share how it works here. So what I do is I come up into contact, and I'm just going to activate uh, activate all the outputs. Right. It I will have to, I think, restart. Oh, no, I don't have to, which is good. So um, when, I, when, I create, uh, when I click activate outputs, what it does is you'll see here it's created, let me just zoom out here, it's created uh, all these outputs, you know, because I activated all of these outputs. So they, they've now got individual channels. So let me just try and figure out how to get this all on screen at once. So now what I can do is I can say I want rhythm higher on out one, layer two on out three, and then out four. That hasn't got any sound on it yet, but whatever. One thing to note is if you choose to go out, uh, you, you know, you choose to use the independent out, the layer will no longer use any of the master effects. It's basically bypassing this in favor of using your own. So now that this is routed out, you see that we now have it on independent. 
tracks, which allows us, should we so desire, to uh, add effects to it. So let's say we wanted a compressor on this thing. You know, we can use the built-in one from here. I don't know why I chose this one, but. Uh, you know, we can put some decapitator on there, make it beefy. But then on the other track, we have which one? And then on this, we can put some replica. And then, you know, so we've got we've got our independent effects, you know, our external third party plugins. And again, this is this is tied in, you know, so the sound comes out of the group. So no matter what you do here, you know, everything will translate. So even these little double steps. Let's put this on four. So we get like a little fill at the end. So you see like that's how, that's how uh, you can route out of this. And the cool thing about it is if you're writing um, that, you know, you, you don't have to have four independent outputs. This is still just one MIDI note. So you see one MIDI note and we're still, uh, let me turn the sun off. So when you render your project, you don't need four independent faders or anything like that. This is just for you to tweak. So it's essentially like plugging, um, it's, just, yeah, it's essentially plugging the, uh, the engine into your DAW or it's more like plugging your DAW back into the engine so that you can add third party plugins and the such. So let's take a little ganders at the preset browser. So <laughs> this is the version again, this is the version that doesn't have all our presets in it yet. This is just something we put together for the demo writers. So they got an idea of uh, how it works. So we're going to, the way we're planning it right now, the way we're planning of setting them out is kind of themes rather than, uh, than articulations. We may change that, you know, we've still got a week to fi finalize that. So let's just take a listen to a few of these. I'm just going to turn the effects off that I just put on because this is still routed out. So I'm just going to put this back to MFX. If you put these back to MFX, it turns back to uh, coming back through this, this bottom one here. So this one's using a fair bit of, uh, where is it? It's this one here. So you see, this is using the, uh, the LFO, the modulator LFO on a saw wave, but because we're doing a negative, so this is positive, that means it will be a saw, uh, saw down. If you go the opposite way, it's going to do this in reverse. So it's going to be a saw up. So you can see here, this has got a saw up going every 16th, no, every eighth. So the bits are being pushed up. We can do the same to the rate. So you can do shit like that. Let's have a listen to a few others. <laughs> By the way, if you guys are interested, Aaron Friendsley, who is the other person in Hybrid 2. So Hybrid 2 is made up of me and Aaron Friendsley. I kind of handle the talking to you guys bit, making sounds and coming up with concepts. Aaron's the fucker who actually makes this shit. <laughs> He's the one who sits down and writes into a, a programming language and then this shit comes out. So everybody say hi to Aaron and tell him he's, he's a beast. So here's a pretty cool sound. So this is a, a kind of synthy vibe using some analog loops. And this is something cool I like. So we have in the library, uh, it's quite loop based in a way. Not loop, not completely loop based, but it is a uh, loops are, <laughs> it's a, it, it, 
responds well to loops. So here we have, I'm just gonna turn the step sequencer off. We're just on analog loops. And if I just play. So these are just loops recorded from, you know, my various synths and whatnot. But then you turn on the step sequencer and it, you know, you can change where it starts and stuff. So it becomes a new. So you get that vibe of a good, you get that vibe of a good loop that you've built, you know, a custom loop you've built somewhere else. But it's completely unique. So it's more like you're just bringing that tone of a sound that you like and creating something new with it. So let's just listen again. So this is, this is just playing straight up and then up here we have uh, some just some of those clicks, you know, those useful string-like, almost untonal. And as you can hear, we've got like this kind of, t -t 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 -t. so we're doing that by using the uh, modulation on a, um, on a saw down here for the bits. And as Aaron mentioned, if you click the waveform, like if you want to be really chaotic with it, you click the waveform and you can actually drag, um, you know, so if you want. You know, if you want to be, if you want to get some really interesting sounds, you can drag this wherever the fuck you want it. So you see that feels kind of out of time. We move it to the middle. I actually prefer that. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep that on there. A little bit of uh, no mixing on this one, actually. And again, all going out through the thing. Uh, so we let's have a look at the other presets. So uh, one of the cool things about this is we're going to have uh, user banks. We may, I'm not sure how many we're going to have. Each bank has... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, there we go. Uh, each preset bank has 30 presets in it. Uh, and to save a preset, let's say you've built a sound you like, you just click, uh, single click, don't double click or you'll load up in a nit patch. You just single click where you want to save it and you type name and then you click right and it will just be in the preset browser and that's there, that's good, that's ready to stay, okay? So someone in the chat says, currently it's hard to tell if it's a simple loop playing or something being triggered by the step sequencer. And that is the point. That is that is actually the point of what we want because uh, you know everybody's got like a bank of their own loops that they've had for years and stuff and they don't use them anymore because they've become obsolete or old sounding. What you can do is you can drag them into chaos and you can reuse them. And I'm gonna show you how you do that right now. So. Alongside this, and this this is something me and Aaron are quite proud of. Again, Aaron built this from scratch, you know, um, so all credit to him on this one because he's a, he's a wizard. We have a thing, trying to fucking find it. We have, <laughs> there it is. We have a thing called the Chaos Bank Manager. So the Bank Manager is essentially um, an independent application. This is built outside. This comes as an EXE or a, what is it? It's just a Mac app. I'm not sure what the file name is. And this is where it goes off. So let's say, for example, uh, you are an owner of Project Alpha or Bravo. And this is, this is the main reason I'm telling you, you won't regret owning Project Alpha and Bravo. So we can create a new bank, right? And we'll call this Alpha Sounds, right? And let's say we want the Project Alpha high loop. Now let's let's do the the brush loops, right? So now we have a category. So the way this works is this is the first lane, you know, what do you want your bank, your preset template to be called? And then that second category which is it's hard to get them on the window at the same time. 
anyway, so this category, the category is what loads up here. And then this is where it gets cool, guys. This is where you have, this is where your minds are going to be blown. So let me go up to uh, project alpha in my little, my little thing over here. Let's go to samples, uh, rhythms, brushed loops. I just select all of these and boom, drag them in. They are now imported into Project Chaos Engine. They are mapped and they are ready for syncing. That's, that's that done. That's as, it's as easy as that. Let's say we want, um, I don't fucking know. Let's say we want to randomly bring in raw cello. You know, we can just change this raw cello and we can select all that shit. Just drag it in. Drag it in and boom, boom, it's in there, right? And so uh, let me just bring in one more thing, you know, uh, not the, uh, fuck it, we'll bring the drums in. And this is where it's cool. So imagine, think of all those sample libraries you've bought through the years that have got cool um, loops, booms, hits, all that kind of shit. Just think about them for a second. Think how many you already have, you like, but you no longer use. So check this out, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I don't even need to like save anything. So now I can come here. I'm just gonna, just in case something secret loads up, I'm just gonna come here for a second. I'm going to contact file load. You can see it in the background there. Uh, yeah. Okay, so there's nothing secret there. So what it's done is it's automatically in my Project Chaos folder made that folder alpha sounds, okay? So I didn't have to create this folder. I didn't have to do anything. I just went to the bank manager. Where, where did the bank manager go? Oh wait, I closed the bank, man. <laughs> anyway, so in the bank manager, I all I you saw it. All I did was double click and make a folder called Alpha Sounds, and it builds the sample folder for you. So now, if I load this, in fact, let me just let me just get rid of the uh, factory one for now. So I'm just going to go File Load, and we're just going to come up to Alpha Sounds and load that in, right? So remember what I loaded in. So we have Brush Loops, Raw Cello, and these things are, and they're now in. That's that's all I have. So one caveat, you'll hear that this is slow currently. The one caveat for importing your own loops is they have to be four bars. Uh, it doesn't matter what tempo you recorded at. It, it, it doesn't have to be four bars, but four bars is the what it's expecting you to import. So if you've got loops that you really like and they're two bars, if you import two bars, what it will do is it will stretch two bars out to four bars. So it will be half the speed. And this is actually useful. Like if you want a certain set of loops to come in half time, import them as, uh, yeah, import them as two bar loops. If you want it to be twice as fast, import it as eight bar loops. Whatever it is, it will reduce it down to four bars. Okay, so this is all the brush loops. Uh, you know, but we've also got the raw cello. I'm gonna turn the sync off for that. You know, so that's in there. And the cool thing about that is, you know, like if we have this sync off, it's basically in sample mode. So if I play low, it's going to play slow. You know, we can build like our little. Um... But not only that, you know, like because it's in this engine, you know, we can come up to the step sequence so we can build a fucking rhythm out of it. Uh, let's put this up to this and let's go 16th, fuck it, why not? So that is now just a rhythm, but we can also layer that with like the drum loop. See, like all that shit is just ready to go. So think about all your sample libraries that you have in your library. You can you can just import them all. Like the other day, I was importing some fucking like sample CDs from the Giga era. And again, this is this is uh, synced in. So now I can do that trick, you know, where I was making it like eighth notes, and I can just. Oh wait, I need to put the steps up to eight. Mm. 
but it doesn't end there. Like, let's say, for example, that we, we had custom sounds. It doesn't just have to be one library. So if I come back over to the, uh, da, 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 sorry, I'm just loading up the bank manager. Where is it gone? The fucker. So, uh, <laughs> our folder's getting a little, little messy, Aaron. We need to clean this shit up. Um, so let's go to the bank manager. So as I showed you, like, all I did to create that fold, that file was new bank. I just typed in the name, double click. But we, if we wanted to, we could say we could mix and match. Like we can, uh, I can come down to Project Bravo, wherever the fuck that is. Hang on, it's here somewhere. Here we go. So we can bring in like some Project Bravo. We can mix and match. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to bring in some rhythms. Let's bring in. Uh, let's bring in these clickers. You know, these old, these old clickers like this. You know, let's drop them in. And like, see, I haven't done anything. I haven't saved it. I haven't, I can now just come reload the patch alpha sounds and we should now have our Bravo loops imported. And you see how quick that was. There's no fucking around with the wrench. There's no trying to re, um, trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to, <laughs> There's no fucking about because one of one of the things we've always tried to do is give people the opportunity to use our tools that we've built with their own sound. So it becomes like a, a sound design plugin, not just a sample playback. And this is the cool thing about it as well. So because this is also, uh, wait, which, which folder am I looking for here? Because that has made a new folder again. Uh, when I when I did that project chaos banks. So because it made this alpha sounds and it's all self-contained, the data's in there, the samples are all there, they're all mapped out, ready to go. Uh, for any of you who are developers or you wanted to be a sound developer, but you didn't have the means to create a UI or something like that, um, we, are we are opening the doors to you guys to make Project Chaos expansion packs and sell them on your own. You know, like you can't give away Project Chaos, obviously, but all you'd have to do is import the sounds like I did there. Um, you know, just drag in your own sounds. You, the, the, the caveat there is you have to own them. We take no responsibility if people use copyrighted things. Nothing to do with us, that's you. But if you wanted to get into the sampling game, you can use Project Alpha and create, your, create and sell your own expansion packs. And it's as easy as that. Like if I wanted to sell this bank now, I just right click, zip that up and then that, that's the file I sell. It's already done for you. It's already mapped. There are, all the samples are in there. They've been copied across. You're good to go. And again, we can whack this in menu mode if we want and layer them up. Uh, you know, whatever we want, whatever we want to do. And again, so you can see how insanely powerful that is. I know that a lot of you have all these samples laying about. And usually what someone does when they have a like a sample, like, you know, they've they've recorded something and they're like, I want to bring this into um, you know, I want to bring this into Project Chaos. Let me see if I have like my flute, for example. Let me just do this as a test. Uh fuck, where the where did I put it? Where did I put it? I know where I put it. Um so for example. I had, oh fucking, where is it? Where is it? I have a, a sound of my flute. Flute. Uh, while I'm searching for this, hang on. Oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> let, me, let me just bring in um, a, uh, a cello. A cello will do. Oh, actually, I think that's where the flute is. Yeah. So let's say that I got this. <laughs> right I just load up the bank manager flute and I'm just going to drag the flute in <laughs> so now the flute's in there it's ready to go like and you see what I'm saying like that is that is the the that is the ingenuity of this this is the the because like you whenever you would want to create your own samples and stuff, or you want to, you know, use your own samples across the keyboard and you drag it into contact, it would just, it would map it out, but you wouldn't really have like options. It would just come in like this. 
you know what I mean? And no control, but now you can just use the bank manager, throw it in, and you see now we have the flute. But not only do we have the flute, we have all the controls, you know, up, ready, and mapped. So let's say I don't like where that sample's starting. We do have sample start adjust down at the bottom here. It's always a bit fiddly to get onto, Aaron. It's fiddly. <laughs> it's too small. No, I'm joking. So like, let's say that now we've got... So we'll bring up the... Or, you know, we can just turn that into a drone. You can do that. And again, of course, should you so desire, you can turn this into a rhythm. <laughs> Um, so one thing to mention, now that that sample start has moved to here, that means that uh, the sample start, when this is right at the bottom, will now start there. So that is the bass line. So now if I put this on, put it in fourth. come to the mods, put this on sixteenths, and put it on the calf. Or, you know, we can throw it in an arpeggio. Bring in some brush loops to layer on with it, you know, we'll make this it's fucking eights. Yeah, yeah. Got fucking Aaron. No, <laughs> joking. And we're not even using the bank sounds anymore. That's what that's what I love about this. This will just have as a loop. Why not sync it up? Can third party, uh, amazing stuff, Daniel and Aaron, can third party developers add more content? Yes, that's what I just said. So you saw how easy it was for me to build this. If you have a bunch of custom loops that you think people would dig, you just, you know, make, uh, you just make, come here and make like my, my super awesome expansion, you know, and then you just put your sound banks one, uh, carnage, you know, carnage loops, whatever. And you just drag sounds in. And that's what I'm saying. That's how easy it is. Like it's done. The job, the job is done. So now you just come to your, uh, you know, your, your folder and you see, I didn't, I didn't prepare that or anything. So now if I come to my bank folder, my super awesome expansion and you know, it's all pre-mapped and you see there's presets here. So like it'll even, there's nothing in it, but you know, like I can just come here, file load uh, and banks, my super awesome expansion. And you see that is, that is now loaded. And I mean, I didn't put any sounds in it, so there's, no, there's nothing in it yet, but you see it just loads blank. And if you have those sounds, that means that all you have to do to release an expansion is come to that folder it created zip it up and just sell that file. And then anybody who's got Project Chaos just drops that file into their um, their bank, Project, Project Chaos banks. They drop it there and it's, you know, they can just load it up and it's good to go. You see how easy that is? That's that's what we're going for. We're going for usability. So now let's, let's take a deeper look at the new uh, sound categories. Um, 
God, I've built all these new fucking things. How many banks do you think we should put in a sample pack? That's up to you guys. However many you think uh, is worthwhile. I need to get Matt Bowdler on this. I need a Matt Bowdler expansion. He's got some loops. Let's see if we'll throw them in. So let's go through the loop categories now. So AD breaks. This is um, this is us kind of harkening back to the Stylus RMX days of uh, drum breaks. <laughs> So we got a bunch of these. Fuck that. So I can come to the step sequencer, you know. We've we've been through this, but I'm just gonna keep reiterating. And we put this up to eight. And we'll have this in eighths and then just So, you know, like we've got a little cool sound. And the other thing we have in the AD breaks is we have, um, the, at, at the far end of it, we have some band pass ones. You know, so like if you're, you know, creating like a little haze thing and you just want like some subtle. You know what I mean? You've just got like a vibe. You've just got a vibe going. Uh, I didn't mention it, by the way, but to turn on a layer, uh, we have these little speaker icons. If the speaker's illuminated, that layer is active. If it's not, it's not. So let's say we've got this band pass thing. We turn on the step sequence. Wait, let me just play it without so you hear what the loop is. Okay, put on the step sequencer. And you hear that's a completely different loop. You know what I mean? And that's that's the other thing we're trying to push is one of the things that happens with our, uh, you know, with with hybrid libraries is people is like, oh, I've heard that loop everywhere. You don't have to have that anymore. Now you can just remake the loop. And it's not like that took me an hour. I, li <laughs> I mean, I'll do it again from scratch. So let's say that we have, I don't know, if I give... let's say we have this loop. And if people are like, oh, I've heard this loop everywhere. It's like, okay, goon. What I'll do is I'll make eight steps. Doesn't matter if I make more. And then I will just randomly. Oh yeah, I'm in menu mode. <laughs> so again, I'll turn it off. People are like, oh, I've heard that loop everywhere. Yeah, well, have you heard this one? No, you haven't. You see, so that that's that's the idea behind that. So where were we? AD breaks. So, <laughs> I'm trying to show the sounds. So this is uh, you know just our basic. Oh, left solo on. You know, so we got these like punchy. Did I? Yeah, I fucked with the mix. Didn't I? Oh, I'll turn the delay off. So we've got some of those, you know, good for layering in. Then we have these uh, analog loops. You know, so these are just loops recorded, but these, uh, this is one of those categories that you don't think about until you have it. And you're like, oh, fuck, yeah. These are the kinds of sounds, because they have all this kind of interesting content within it, when you put it in a step sequence, it actually ends up being really good in the step sequencer. And let's put this one up to, you know, fucking, let's have that be two beats, why not? Because we can. Just to, just to show you, we, like this is what the loop sounded like. And again, we can, like we have this now, so we can just scroll through to another sound. Or if you wanted to just 
test it, you know, instead of going through, you can just put it in menu mode. Because now they're mapped across the keyboard. And I can put the step sequencer on and just trial it against everything. to keep it 16th we can do that that second note isn't working very well though. and again without it uh, SBK design says I missed it but our loops auto sliced if you import them so again the caveat is if you want them to be imported correctly into chaos it is looking for a four bar loop. If you import it as four bars, doesn't matter what tempo it is. So long as it is four bars long, it will come in and sync perfectly. If you import a two bar loop, it will stretch it to four bars, which means that this, the loop will come in half time. If you import an eight bar loop, that will come in at twice as fast as normal. Okay, so, so long as you can put your um, loops, you know, in four bars, doesn't matter the tempo it will come in synced correctly. And I mean, you can get creative. We actually, uh, <laughs> when we were importing the kick force sounds, which I'll show you in a second, we imported some accidentally at two bars and it stretched them really far out. But because they kind of sounded like this, it was actually a really interesting texture. It was actually kind of cool. I wanted to keep it, but Aaron was like, no, no, we will make them all four bars or they will mock us. So, uh, so we ended up doing that. So yeah, the analog loops are great for this thing. Um, one thing I wanted is um, I wanted to have the, uh, you know, I wanted to have the option to do some kind of trailery things by itself. So I'm just going to whack this in menu mode. We built a drum. Oh wait, we've got effects on or something. So I built some of these loops. Yeah, some basic ones. These are very me kind of loops. You know? So let's see. And of course you can do, I know I keep doing this on everything. You can do this on these two. These work good as fourths. And we have a gate here. You know, so like we, it's in menu mode, so I can just. If I turn this off, this is what that loop is. But with it on. Creates a whole new rhythm. And again, if you wanted to be specific with it, you can come and choose which step you want and say, actually, I want that beat to bear. I mean, like, it's easier if I do it on an AD break. So, do, do. So, where's my snare? I guess it would be. <laughs> it's confusing because there's so many random steps. But let's say we want uh, beat three. Um, beat two, to be honest, snare. I guess we just find a snare. Actually, that was a, that was a fucking... This is a weird rhythm. We want that to be a kick, you know. By the way, this is Aaron on the drums, everyone. So anyway, so the uh, we had the chaos drum loop. So I was just showing this so that you know that uh, you can choose where in your loop you actually want to go. You can be specific with it. Right, you know, as you do, as you do. But uh, I also thought it would be good to give you guys. Okay, you don't want individual hits synced, or they turn into that, unless you want some weird effect. But you turn. 
we've given you the sounds. So you have these sounds. Although they sound higher up than normal, but whatever. I'll, I'll look into that later. So like if we put the filter down like this and then put velocity to filter, you can create that kind of round robin, you know, if you hit soft. So now if we go back to the step sequencer and we'll put it like on 16. It, wait. So, like, you can just use it for its transient, you know. But these are, if you if you put the chaos drum in, uh, what's the word? If you put it in. I need to turn the step sequencer off, that was it. Uh, if you put it in menu mode, like if you just play it, it's just individual hits, you put it in menu mode. The hits are mapped across. Hey, Aaron, for some reason, these, uh, these are in the wrong key. Oh, look, it's because I was key switched. You see what I did there? Um, so this is what they actually sound like. So you can actually... You know, but that's machine gun. But again, if we put on the velocity again... And then we put the step sequencer to one, two, three, one, three, two, whatever. And then hold three keys. So this is fucking up because I'm. Tr you see how I've left the start thing on? It's actually starting some of the sounds there. So if I just hold three keys and then hold down at the bottom. Or. Or, you know, I know, for example, that my big hit's going to be on the third key, it's going to be on the highest one up. So we'll make all the big hits three. And then all the other ones are not. can create your own rhythms with the sounds but like I know a lot of you wanted uh, in the last ones you wanted some some drum sounds to use as accents I'm actually going to show something now um, that is actually really cool with these hits so if we come down to whoosh and impact this is actually something uh, we've designed and for those of you who are looking to make your own expansion packs this is very useful so remember how I said that the chaos uh, the chaos uh, UI is looking for a four bar loop right that means that if you've got whooshes and bangs, you can actually use that format to your advantage. So if you create a whoosh that is one bar long and then have an impact that starts at bar two and you import it that way. So if I put this in menu mode, so you see these whooshes all end in the same place, right? And all the impacts start where the whooshes end. You see what we did there? So that means that we can create custom whoosh bangs by putting it in menu mode. Because it's looking for four bars, we just made it, so it again, it doesn't matter what tempo. It's It makes it so that when I push sync, all of these whooshes will whoosh for one bar and then the impact will start at bar two. So if I do the whoosh. And the impact. So it takes a while, but if I push the two keys together,
if you're feeling particularly lazy, you just fucking ham fist it, ham fist it, you know, just. Oh, what did I, what did I do? And you might be, oh, I mean, like, that's cool, but I want some more, you know, the impacts don't really hit me in the balls hard enough, you know. Um, so fine, come to the chaos hits, put on the step sequencer and be like, okay, fourth notes, I want it to come in on bar two. So we just put in one single note there, put this up to 16th and then. Wait, did I do that right? Wait, why did you not make <laughs> What did I do? Oh, this is on. Oh, wait, what, what the fuck? The fuck, I need a big sound. Hmm. What did I do? Step count. Okay, I fucked something up. There we go. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, the solo... <laughs> The solo's being a bit finicky at the minute. So I want this to start on bar two. Sorry, there we go. Right, and I put the duration to four, for example. So that means that this step is now over four beats, uh, which means that we'll get all the tail. I mean, you could just turn the release up. That would work too. But now if we put it in with a whoosh. So now this is hitting on that thing. And you can also go beyond that. So we have this other bank called uh, Distorted Bits. And if you had this folder of sounds, I'll play them in a second. If you had this folder of sounds and we just released this without the chaos engine, you'd be like, the fuck, Dan? What the fuck? It's, it's just pure chaos. But there's always a but with this. If you do the exact same thing, and put this here and you mix it with the whooshes <clears throat> and you turn it on you've now got a on top So you can create these custom layered up. You see, so it's very powerful. And again, I can just hold a whole bunch of. And that doesn't have to be the distorted bits. You know, it can be um, any hit that you may want it to be. So that's how the whooshes work. So you can build all these cool things. Um, again, all these sounds are available um, as open waveform, should you want to drag any of them in. Okay, so where do we get down to? So distorted bits, so we've got some downers, you know. Your typical A fair. And you see, the funny thing is, is because I still have these layers on, you're still going to get that hit on beat two. I'll turn those off for now, though. So you got your, your you know, good old downers. And we, you know, let's see what it sounds like as a rhythm. Kind of sounds like a like a hip hop track. You know, throw in a rhythm. Why not?
So, you know, like th that's one of the fun things you could do is you just like, I wonder what happens if I put that step sequencer that I designed on it. You know, you can do that shit. So we've got them downers, uh, drones and textures. So these are kind of what you'd expect. These are uh, just your drones. We're going to take the sink off. And again, drones are really good for just trying out. Uh, so let's just put this up to eight steps and then slow it down to like half bars. So this is going to cycle through half bar. So like if you've got all these drones and I'm sure most of you guys have like 20 drone libraries, 50 rhythm libraries. I, I mean, there's like a, there's a trailer library coming out right now. They let you have the waveforms. You can just load them in and do this shit. Hey Aaron, these sound pretty cool. Throw some of the, <laughs> throw some of these in the, uh, in the, in the dark section. You know, and again. Bring it, I don't know, some loops. This is this is the ultimate like just inspiration. Just, just try shit, you know. Don't like that one. Need it synced, please. you save your patches to recall later you come over to preset you go user you click what you click once make sure you click once if you're saving if you double click you will load the patch so you click the thing you change the name and then you click right and that is saved in your preset bank something i didn't mention is when you create your own banks in the bank manager as i showed uh as i showed over here uh, each of these will come with their own preset browser, so you can go in and change the presets and then just save the pack. So this is... So again, we're just making these cool kind of rhythmic, and that's why it's called Project Chaos, is you can make these really complex sounding rhythms really quickly and like we, we had this conversation with someone it's like well why would i want this if i've already got omnisphere that that's an interesting argument for a, for a couple of reasons but the main reason um is that like look at it this way you can make any synth sound essentially with any synth it's just how hard is it for the person to get there you know what I mean? How long would it take? So yes, you could absolutely do this kind of thing in an Omnisphere or in another synth or something, but this is focused on it. So if you want to make these complex rhythmic things, you want to create these, you know, you want to import samples and just have them in a user interface. You know, even if you just like record, like I did with the flute, you record some flute samples and you're like, oh, I really wish I could have that like in contact instead of just loading it in and having the white bar load it into chaos and you have access to adsrs effects you can layer it up you know if you've got a load of drones you can try it out as a rhythm and that's why that's why this is you know even if you have things like omnisphere or whatever that's why you would get this because this just takes you straight to making this without you know all the faff with no fannying about and again, because we're in menu mode, you know, we can we can play um, a sound and we can change the pitch with the key switches. Anyway, so that that's the drone. I should probably play the drones as drones so you can hear them. Wait, what did I do? Oh yeah. What have I done wrong this time? What did I do wrong this time? <laughs> oh, wait. I was too high. 
So again. menu mode something uh, something worth mentioning is if you import your own samples and they're all different pitches you just come up to ops and you can show the pitch adjuster and you can adjust uh you can adjust the pitch of the sample just when you do that you have to make sure you resave the template in order for that to stay there that's just one of those little contact quirks so like if you adjust the pitch of this for example and you wanted that to stay there you'd have to uh, file save okay just so that you got that but like, because we've tuned all our own factory samples, that means I can just get a fistful and they'll be in key. And then change the pitch. So this is going to be great. <laughs> this is going to be great for like movie guys and TV guys. This is going to be a huge time saver. Uh, so we got some drum hits. You know your typical. You know, say so if you wanted to. You know, create. You know, if you just wanted to step sequence some of that shit in there, you know. Oh, I'm still in menu mode. And again, these aren't these ones aren't really pre-baked loops. We're making new combinations. One thing I do recommend, by the way, is that like, let's say you. Let's say I like that. One thing I would do is I would like use the uh, render in place that's built into contact. You know, uh, you'd have to see how you do it in your own DAW. So now we have that as an audio loop, uh, you know, because it's rendered out. Uh, you know, that's a, a you could do whatever you want. You could reverse it if you really wanted to. But because we have that as a thing, what I would do is I would put my, my thing over. I'd, I'd render that out as an audio file. So if I like working with audio tracks and I just want to drag them in, you know, without using the engine, I can do that. But also the other thing I got in the habit of doing is rendering out like cool things I like and then re-importing them <laughs> back into chaos so that I, I then have this as a loop, which I can then do a step sequencer on and create a completely new rhythm with just this. So it's kind of like this endless, um, this endless, cycle of custom loops that you can build. You, you know, if you don't have a custom loop bank or a custom sound bank, you can now do that, um, which is very useful. You, that's what we're going for, like user-friendly uh, custom, because, you know, we can make all the sounds and we've provided you with a shit ton of sounds, but at the end of the day, we know that most people want to be unique or at least they don't want to get sample fatigue, you know, like where people are like, oh, I've heard that one loop in everything. It's like, you, you now you can change that shit up or layer it differently. Right, so we're up to uh, fragment drones. So again, fragment, uh, the fragment sections are, we've taken a very small piece of audio and it kind of loops or it evolves and we're, you know, taking it in different directions. So I'm just turn off these other ones. Oh, I need to actually go back to the thing and unmute everything. Well, we got still got a thing on it. Hey, Aaron, are we talking pricing today? Just send me a message on Slack so I can see what the price is that we actually ended up agreeing to. <laughs> so you see, these are like just small sounds that are... And 
And then we have these things called fragment repeaters. And these are small little sounds. <laughs> And a lot of you are probably like, why would I ever use? But there's something about these sounds, you don't notice them very often, but they make things sound cool. Like if, if you've ever listened to a TV or film score, you normally have something like this. Now we'll put on some. Let's say we want that and we want that sound. So now we and again, you can turn the track on and off to your heart's content. So the, these are the fragment repeaters. God damn it, Aaron. Uh, but yeah. That's, and then, and then the first number you said was the intro price and then the, yeah. Okay. So the price for this, we're, we're going to keep going through the sounds and I'll keep repeating the price. So the recommended retail price of this, the full price of this library is $249. The intro price will be $199. However, if you own both Alpha and Bravo, you can get the library for $179 at the intro. Um, those who entered the competition have a 10% coupon on top of the intro price. Um, and yeah, and there will be a bundle that will essentially be the price of, uh, project chaos at full price, but alpha and Bravo at the sale price. That's what the bundle will cost unless I'm mistaken, Aaron, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So the current sale price for alpha Bravo bundle is $99. So if you have, uh, let's say you buy, this, this is awkward to set up, so we'll have to do it like by a by a case by case basis. Let's say you have Alpha, but not Bravo, or Bravo but not Alpha, and you buy Chaos. If you send us the receipt of like the one that you bought and Chaos, we will let you have the one that you don't have for the sale price. So it would be if it's ninety nine dollars, I guess that'd be what forty. $49. Yeah. So you can get $50. So you can get the other one that you don't have for $50. So you can load that shit in. So basically it's going to work out no matter which way you do it is you'll have uh, chaos at its price. And then the uh, project alpha and Bravo will be at the sale price. If you buy them in the bundle, that's how that's going to work. Anyway, so fragment repeaters. Where was I? So fragment repeaters. So the haze, haze is like Aaron's child. So these sounds are, um, they're somewhere between drone. It's, it's a loyalty discount. If you own Alpha or Bravo, you get it for 179 at release. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Or Aaron, was it they have to have both? I can't remember. Like, this is why I was saying on VI Control, it's like the trying to figure out pricing. There's so many different fucking scenarios. Aaron will have the final say on that one, Eros. All oh, right, okay. Sorry, I, I misspoke. So you have to have both in order to get the uh, 179 price at release. That's the loyalty thing. But... Uh, you can still get chaos at 199 and you can, uh, or you, or you can, uh, <laughs> this is confusing. You can upgrade at the same time. Fuck. This is so, this is so complicated. Fucking three libraries. So you can upgrade, uh, you can get the 
other library. So if you have Alpha, you can buy Bravo and then get the, uh, and then <laughs> you could buy Bravo for $50 and then get the 179. So like if you buy them together, that would be 179 plus 50. Fuck, it's something like that, right? I forget how I forget how we're doing it, but ba basically, it's one seven nine if you have Alpha and Bravo. If you if you want to get all three, you can get the one that you don't have for fifty dollars, and then Chaos at one seven nine. If you have neither, and this is your introduction, and you just want Chaos, it's one nine nine, and yeah, it's one nine nine if you only have one of the other libraries. Like so, say you only have Alpha then it will be 199 it's just the introductory price but you can choose to upgrade and get bravo for 50 dollars uh, numbers uh, you know like you know like whenever someone's doing the thinking and all the equations come up that's pretty much <laughs> pretty much how it is it's complicated it's complicated okay but then when the sales are over bravo will be 259 and then the bundle for all three together so the bundle fuck so the bundle for all three together at sale price is two nine nine, right? Yeah, because it's two hundred dollars plus a hundred dollars, so it's two nine nine or two nine eight dollars at sale price for all three. When it's not on sale, it would be three four nine. Like that's the non-sale price. So basically, if you buy Alpha and Bravo bundled with Chaos, they will always be at the sale price. But if you buy Chaos, ugh, it'll be on the website, you fucks. <laughs> but you get the gist. You get the gist, right? Um, yeah, so we're keeping it, we're keeping it in line with our other ones. Like affordable, it's it's for hobbyists and it's for professionals, you know. So this is uh, anyway, hazes. Hazes. So this is Aaron's love child. That's what I was saying. So these are somewhere between drone and phrase. And the reason these are cool is, you know, like they work really well with, again, I'm sorry I keep saying it, but they work really well with the step sequencer. Let's bring these up a bit. Oh, yeah, fuck, I can sync this, can't I? some better examples here. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm solo. There we go. So there's a haze being just doing like one beat, so it's just repeating at half time. Again, that's a haze. Use the gate. So <laughs> there's a drone here. This is in the step sequencer. This is a drone sound. If I turn this off, this is the sound. Put it in the step sequencer. I made this one preset, new world, every key. So basically I just loaded all the rhythms in um, in menu mode. So every single key is just a layer of a high rhythm, a low rhythm, a mid rhythm, and a tap. So I push any key and you get like a completely new thing.
And of course, because this is in menu mode, I, I can just like big ham fist. Play loads at the same time. And all that good stuff, job done. Exactly, job done. This is just some of the presets. Um, <laughs> this one's pretty empty at the minute, don't worry. There, there will be full, it will be full, but this is like the keys. So this is this is pretty cool. Um, I'll show you the synth bit now. So uh, we've, like I mentioned at the beginning, we ha we do have waveforms. So they are just straight up. Um... They're just waveforms, right? So you can use this like a synth. So if you have analog synth, digital synth, and you want to, you know, play with those tones in chaos, you just record like a sound, and then you bring it in. You throw it through all the controls. So I'm just using it like a synth. This one's doing the bass line. And of course you could see like I've got sub booms loaded and that's just playing uh, as a sample. So when I hit a key, I get a boom. some of those dark textures. And so you can see how you can kind of layer all this shit together just to make some really cool um, vibes. Uh, so where were we? Fragment, haze, impacts. Oh wait, I need to put it in menu mode. You know, your typical impacts. Um, like that, that's what I was mentioning when I was doing my video blog on the on the motorbike is that we've added the stuff you expect, but it's not really the focus. The focus of this, the, the reason it's called chaos is the ability to create these really complex rhythmic things with very, very little effort. So this is the kick force. This is this is this is one of the new banks, one of the new styles that we're bringing to it. And these are re uh, the, the thought behind these is they're basically kick drum esque style uh, sounds. They come in the form of loops, but again, you've seen with the step sequencer that the fact that things are loops don't even matter anymore. Okay, so you see, like. And the reason these are good uh, with the step sequencer is because they're really transienty, which is a word. Um, and because they're so transienty, they they are really good for just random. Fourth. See, 
you know, it's these kind of big... What about loops which aren't 4-4? So long as they're four bars long, you're fine. So you see here, I'm just using the modulator to control the car. But if I turn that off and turn the step sequencer off, this is what the loop sounded like. Again, through the thing. Sorry, I'm trying to show you the sounds. I keep doing it. I keep just playing with it. So you can hear what the vibe behind these are. So that's the kick force. So we've got some, some, you know. Some talking, some some Black Panther drum. <laughs> you know, like it's good to just layer these organic loops with things. You see, like they're, they're useful just to add in that extra rhythm and again. They're menu, so you can, uh, you know, throw them in menu mode and just click through. Uh, so the low, low rhythms. Really easy to manipulate stuff. All right, mid, you know, rhythms in mid. Oh, fuck. That's pretty cool, you know, with delays on as well, you know, maybe six thirty seconds, that's my go-to. But 
it again just by itself. You can see how you can take like all these older things that you have and just... That's what that loop is, but with the step sequencer, sounds completely different. That's something you can do with kick balls as well. I prefer these at like 90 though. So the taps, as I mentioned earlier, are like these kind of you know, for these little clicky things. Rhythm taps. Uh, so risers, you know, I'll, these bad boys. Hang on. Oh, wait, it's synced. Again, I just love throwing. <laughs> Throw a rhythm on a riser. Why not? Okay, so that's the risers. Sub boom. You know what these are. Who has a sub in their studio and can feel these? Can you feel them? <laughs> uh, so since...
So you see, we've got like different waveforms and stuff. Sorry, I'm trying to talk a little bit less so you can actually hear the sounds. Uh, and then of course we have whooshes. Oh wait, shit, I've still got a step sequence around. Uh, and these are whooshes that have the tail intact. Whereas the whooshes in whooshes in impacts, uh, the whoosh has a side chained release so that the impact can hit and be clean. So that way, when you get an impact, You play them together. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. So that is, in a nutshell, Project Chaos. Aaron, I don't think I've left anything out, have I? Unless you would like to mention something. Uh, there is unfortunately no bottle mic with this. So that is, that is the Project Chaos reveal. It has been years, years in the making. Um, that's what everybody says. It's deep sampled emotion, 80,001 lines of code. Um, it is the edge of clipping. It is uh, the new chapter of a new era. And it's finally here. And, uh, and it's, it's here. So. Um, if you're on uh, YouTube, this is probably where I'm going to edit the video. If you're on the live stream, hang about. We'll have a little chat. Um, but if you are watching this on YouTube or you've come for the reveal, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're on the live stream, stick around. We'll have a conversation. But uh, if you're on YouTube, thank you so much for watching today. And we will see you all on release day on Halloween 2018 which is what, the 30th or the 31st? I forget, it's one of those days. It's coming out next week as of the day I'm making this. But um, so yeah, the three winners, in case you missed it, third place was, let me find it, let me find it. Let me find it. So third place was Luke Johnson with his dodging bullets. Second was Nico Shule, Sh Shuele, Shuele. He was second place and Scott Kane was first. So thank you if you're on uh, YouTube. This is where the video is going to end. And, uh, you know, make sure to subscribe and all that stuff. If, By the way, if you're on YouTube now, uh, below the video, you can actually see links to both the DJ LA and the Hybrid 2 uh, merchandise. So if you want to get a big Project Chaos t-shirt, that's available. If you want to get the Hybrid 2 logo, that's there. And, you know, all my wanky DJ LA stuff that I do for fun, that's all going to be there. So I will see you YouTube people in the next video, but if you would like to catch these live streams, make sure to uh, go over and subscribe at twitch.tv forward slash hybrid two. Um, but YouTube people, chat, say goodbye to uh, the YouTube people, and um, you know we will see you all. all right. let, me, let me play something before we go. <laughs> Bye bye YouTube. Oh, and the chat saying bye tubes. Bye YouTube's. Anyway, YouTube, we will see you later. Eddie.